Cherry Tree Lane, as sweet as a song. But the nannies who come here, they don't stay for long. Although Mary Poppins takes the title role, the story is as much, if not more, about the Banks family. Mary comes into their lives and changes them, but she also changes the way they see the world and other people in society. So what do we know about the family at the heart of this magical story and the world that they come from? I think what's great about both the show and the movie being set in Edwardian times is there's a liberation that it affords the characters. Because what we then have in the play, as they had in the film, was people who very much were still uh, living by the Victorian ethos and the way in which things were done in Victorian times. And those people who were seeing the changes in society and seeing the new possibilities and were changing with the times. The Victorian era covered the long reign of Queen Victoria from 1837 to 1901, while the Edwardian era marked the reign of her son, King Edward VII, from 1901 to 1910. And these two monarchs' reigns could not have been more different. The Victorian era was very much about these sort of held rigid roles that everyone had. Then you have someone new on the throne and there's all this sort of new technology that's coming into play and everything is changing and so you've got an older generation that's very much stuck in this idea of what life should be and, and this sort of youthful exuberance and they're very much stuck between these two worlds. And of course that gives for a potential for conflict within the piece because the two worlds did not sit easily, easily along with each other. The story of Mary Poppins is totally about the Banks family. Um, and it's more about the parents, in a way, than the children. Mr. Banks is not paying attention to his children. His children are deeply unruly and have driven many nannies away. They're a pair of little savages. If I had my way, you'd be out of this house by George. morning. George! Mr. Banks is, is just focused on working. Mrs. Banks is more interested in becoming an actress. And the kids are greedy and selfish and they don't know how to share. So you have a very unhappy family unit. He's a banker, a husband, a father of two, and, and very much caught up in that idea of what it is to be a man in Edwardian London. The promotion he should have had has eluded him. And as a result of that, the family having a tough time keeping up. He's in his 40s, he's been sort of stuck in this role for a really long time and he needs this nudge that's gonna sort of put him back on track and, and, uh, and sort of help the rest of the family get back on track as well. Without George Banks, you don't have a story. Mary comes to repair his life. Uh, and make him whole again. Mrs. Banks doesn't exactly know what her role is. Is she to take care of her children? Should she seek a position in society and then so help her family that way? Their apologies, ma'am, from your guests. They're not coming, none of them. It was an absolute necessity to give Winifred a journey. She starts off just worrying that she's actually being a proper hostess uh, and wife to what she thinks is a successful banker at the time, rather than bring up children, which is her natural bent, because he says we must have nannies and you must actually just run the house. The role of a woman, it, it, again, in that time period, it was just changing drastically. And as Winifred, it's a woman sort of trying to find her way and fit in with this class system. So Mary really arrives into a household that is in chaos and as a family unit is also in chaos where things are, are incredibly dysfunctional. We wanted to try and create something where families would sort of identify a little bit with these characters even though it was set in a different era. So the kids are, are, are less well behaved to begin with. It feels like you know, they're rude, they're unruly, there's a job to be done. As well as helping to bring the family together, Mary also teaches the children about respecting both the household staff and people from all walks of life in the wider world. I think Mary teaches the children and then teaches the Banks family as a whole to look beyond class at people that ordinarily they would have nothing to do with. The greatest example of it in the show is the bird woman who the children at first dismiss. And Mary Poppins says she's not like that at all. You need to look past what you see. That is the the most beautiful thing about this story is that Mary Poppins erases all walls and certainly changes, you know, the children's viewpoint on how they view people and how they view the world. The children start to, for the first time, take on responsibility and understand they have a job to do. We know things have been difficult for you lately and we really haven't been of much help. So we thought a bit of extra cash might loosen things up a little. They are not just running around freely, but they're part of a family and they have an obligation to fulfill that. 
But for a story centered on a family living over a hundred years ago, can its message still resonate with audiences today? George Banks, the children, Mrs. Banks, they've all learned lessons through it. And the irony is, it's Edwardian, but those are lessons that we're all wrestling with today.